Uh, I'll just make the notes here. So we have a i comma j. Right, that's going to be our coefficient. Coefficients um, in equation i with variable j or unknown j. That's a variable e a r. We have b. Uh, so b i. That's going to be the constant uh, for equation i. Our x matrix is going to be x is equal to, right, so t1, t2, so on, to tn. Um, and our, our a, b, Sorry, our A B matrices are basically corresponding to right row one um, is the control volume one equation, row two, C V two equation, etc. Right. That's generally what we're trying to do. So that's that's pretty ambiguous to write it that way. I think what, what we need to do is actually go through the example and, and see how it's set up. Any questions so far? OK. All right, let's go through the example uh, for this. Um, it's a little bit tedious, but I'll try to maybe skip some parts to make it not so tedious. What we want to do is, um, again, we're, we're trying to get to a, a point where we have constants multiplying our variables. So our variables here are temperature, T1 through Tn. We need to find all the constants that are multiplying those and put them in the matrix. Right, so let's take uh, the first node, for example, up here. So looking at this first node, what do I see that is multiplying, say, T1? Right, so that's going to be Ka delta x. And then I have a minus 1, right? So that's multiplying T1. I've also got uh, multiplying T1 over here, AC, R double prime C, and a minus sign. Um, so grouping all that together would look something like uh, T1 times minus K over minus KAC over delta X minus AC over R double prime C. Right? And this stuff here is going to be my coefficient, because all of that is constant. right? There's nothing variable dependent in that term. So this is going to be A11. OK? For 2, I can do the same thing. Again, I have, I'll have i use a different color. Uh, same stuff multiplying T2. But there's a positive sign, right? Positive in front of T2. Same stuff multiplying. Oh, well, no, nope, sorry. That's it, right? Just T2 is just being multiplied by that stuff there. Uh, so that becomes plus T2 times KAC over delta X, making sure you get the positive sign right. This is A12. Um, and then, so I've got uh, all my stuff on the left hand. Let's bring all the constants th that remain over to the right hand side, and that's going to be my B. So B in this is going to be what? Just circle it here. So B is going to be um, AC over R double prime C times TH, and then this generation term here. All right, so I'll bring that over, and that is, I'll get this right. So it's minus AC times TH over R double prime C uh, minus rho E delta X over 2 AC I squared. OK, so this is B1. Does that make sense? Right? We're, we're just coming up with a linear equation. We have T constant, T2 constant equals B. If we happen to have more temperatures in here, which you shouldn't, right? T1 doesn't interact with any other temperature other than T2. But if you did, you'd have more terms in that equation. 
Okay, so you, you get the idea here, right? We, we do this for equation one. For equation two, we would do the same thing. I'm not going to, I said it was tedious. I won't do that, but I'll just circle it. So we have um, what? We have ti minus one. So let's look at ti minus one being multiplied by kac over delta x. Uh, and that's it, right? So for t, and then for ti, we have that same term here and a minus. We have ti being multiplied in this equation with a minus. Uh, and then we have ti plus 1, so third color. That would be just this stuff here. And then generation is standing alone. All right. So we would have a, a very similar equation. Let me just write it out. You guys need to have this. So bear with me. I'll just write it out quickly. It'll be... Ti, bring up all the stuff together, so that would be minus kac over delta x, minus kac over delta x. And so that could effectively be minus 2 kac over delta x, if we weren't being pedantic, uh, plus ti plus 1 uh, times kac over delta x, uh, plus ti minus 1 times kac over delta x is equal to minus rho e delta x over ac i squared, right? So we have our three variables, our three variable groups, and then our constants. The easiest way to get messed up here is to mi miss a minus sign or something, right? That, that's pretty much it. Uh, we do the same thing. I, I won't do this one, but we do the same thing here, right? Come up with groups, and then you're going to have this function that includes t n and t n minus one. Okay, so that's basically it, right? We we now have our matrix that we can take all of these uh, constant terms, plug them into the matrix as they appear here, and then invert that matrix. Um, so what I want to show you is because that process is actually a little tedious. Let's look how to do that uh, in Maple. You can use Maple to help with this process. OK, first let's do this, clear it off. All right, so there's a lot going on here. But what I, what I have is, um, first I've written out the expressions for each node. Uh, that is, the, like the first equation that I wrote, I'm going to go through and just symbolically write it out. So it's exactly the same thing. KAC, T2 minus T1 over delta x. Uh, this is the node 1. These are our expressions, right? Um, so we'll enter that in. Then there's this, this function here called collect, which I didn't know about till probably <laughs> it was too late, but here we are now. So I have t1, t2. Uh, those, are the, those are the things that I want to collect around, right? So if I give it this function collect, tell it what I'm trying to cl collect against, which is n1. This will take and form groups around those individual things that you're telling us, so T1 and T2, right? So magically, uh, and very conveniently, it gives us our groups. T1 is all this constant stuff. T2 is here. And then we're left with this stuff here, which we have to know is our minus B, right? You have to bring that over to the other side. Um, but this is a really handy way, especially when you get to like, again, re really complicated uh, numerical models that have a bunch of stuff going on, multiple terms. This is a really uh, handy way to just take it here, copy it, dump it into your program. We can do the same thing for the other nodes and I uh, and collect around those. So now we have three groups, TI, TI minus one, TI plus one, and then our B. Uh, and we could do the same thing for n again. Well, one thing I want to point out is in um, in Maple, when you're using this this notation with the brackets, it's sort of interpreting the bracket as a subscript. It's treating that like it's its own variable, right? Like um, uh, t1, it's saying, okay, t subscript 1. That's different from t2. It's just treating them as like totally separate uh, variables. So you can use that notation because it helps copy directly into whatever other program you're using. OK, so let's just look how this goes. So right, same thing for TN. So now I can take all this, right? just copy the thing I want to select and, and copy. 
Um, by the way, if you're doing this and you like trying to write up a report or something, and you want to copy it as as math, or if you happen to be um, like myself and like to use LaTeX, you can copy it as LaTeX and just paste it in the document. So if you're writing up your solution, it's right here. Right? You don't have to then manually go write it. It's a really nice trick. Uh, okay, so so that's um, what you can use Maple for there. So let's say I, I've done this. Now I can copy it over. I want to show you how to do this uh, model in Python. <clears throat> 